Hello everybody, my name is Damiola Magbamlehi and I'm here with my wife Emanuela Magbamlehi Yes, so we're here to share the story of how we met Alright, so yeah. who's going first? Ladies first or... Uh, okay first? Let me, You do the honors Okay, yeah. alright um, So um, rewind to 2016 mm -hmm. I had... Um, I, I was in final year then, medical school and I came across that Miss movie Ignition mm. and when I watched it I was so blessed because then I was going through some emotional crisis like mm. it, I was I just came out of a relationship that didn't work out and everything so the movie really blessed me and I and just like helped me have faith in God that God was going to give me the very best so before then the year before like December 2015 I had sent a message on Facebook to my darling husband and his brother. I sent the very same message to both of them. I sent, um, I introduced myself, I made my intentions, my desire to be a part of drama ministry, my passion for um, acting, and my desire to be a part of it. I sent the message to Dami and Joshua <coughs> on Facebook. Little did I know that I was um, I was on my own. No, no. I was. You're not alone. God is with you. <laughs> Anyways, apparently, apparently both of them are very bad with Facebook and generally DMs. So I waited, 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 and nobody replied me, and so I kind of let it slide. So the next year I watched Ignition, and I found out before I found out that they advertised that um, there was the institute coming up in in uh, May, mm -hmm. and that was like April. But then I have I had final exams in August, so it wasn't feasible. There was no way I was going to leave school, attend two weeks training, and then exams coming up. So I just decided that if November was available, then I will I'll work towards that. So, um, fast forward to November, I had finished school, had passed my final exams, and then uh, we had, I had this like window period of, I was free basically, and I had been wanting to just, you know, this passion for drama was just burning within me, and I wanted to, I wanted to do something about it, so mm. I got some contact, I made some contact, and long story cut short, I um, decided to attend the Mount Zion Institute of Christian Drama in November. Yeah. But there was a little issue. My 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 dad was of the opinion he didn't he didn't understand why I was doing that when I mm. you know I already had medicine on one side and so he was not fully in support. But there was just this push. I can't, I couldn't explain it. Now this had nothing to do with that because in my mind I, I didn't even know he was even coming for the for the institute. I just thought maybe okay that seriously. Okay, come, come. I just thought it was that daddy and mommy that I would see and then you know Mount Zion brethren so I had no intention of meeting Dami or anybody I just wanted to like learn and just get this passion going mm. so um, a week to the institute I went visiting a friend a senior friend who happened to be a mutual friend I, I didn't even know at that point in time that he also knew Dami mm. so when I went to meet I went to visit him and we just just seeing general stuff and I was even telling him about tell him about the guy who I was like um clo getting close to but I wasn't sure if it was God's will and we so were just very messed up shall like I met it was an old classmate who we just reconnected and so I was just seeing this other mutual friend about him telling him that um I'm not sure exactly what's up and so this my this mutual friend in question now he was encouraging me that I should just focus on God and trust God and I'm, and and I decided to do to do that so when I told him I was going for the institute he now told me that ah, that dummy mentioned it to him so I'm like which dummy because I'm like I didn't, I didn't even think it didn't even click my mind that it was him was referring to and I said damn Lola my grandma you know like oh so I'm like oh okay that okay I, I didn't I didn't know about that I didn't know you guys even knew each other. He now said, yeah, that. He now told me how they knew each other. He now said that he wanted to call him. Hey! At that point, my heart was in again. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe my eyes and my ears. I'm like, what? How, don't, don't call him. Don't call him. Don't. I was already freaking out. Like, I was feeling hot from within. Like, what is happening? Because I've always admired Dami a lot. I had, I had watched his movies and I had been so, like, inspired and motivated and challenged. I'm like, how can a human being be this? you know used by god i was always very challenged so a little bit jealous a little bit i won't lie there was a part of me that was like ah how is he doing all these things for god and okay so when i got when i found out that i had the slightest opportunity to get in contact with him i was freaking out like oh my god everything in me was just going fast my heart rate pumping fast everything 
And so he, 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 my friend was was trying to tell me that, oh, that why are you so what's going on? And mm. I just had to like okay nothing. And then lo and behold, he placed the call through so um, Dami and he put on speaker. And then and then the, the call was the phone was ringing. Dami didn't initially pick it up like he's not going to pick it. Suddenly he just picked it. And then I heard his voice. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, that's Damn Lola. That's Damn Dam Lola here on TV. That's Damn Dam Lola whose movies I've watched. And I was freaking out. And okay, so um, when I heard his voice on the phone, I was like, oh my god, I even this is like this is the same Damn Lola on TV. Uh, then um, my friend told him that there was someone coming to institute, and so Dami, I was hearing Dami's voice on the phone saying, oh, wow, that's nice, that's really good that that person should come and everything. But I, I like the fact that, I mean, my friend didn't tell him that he was a lady. So it was just very plain and neutral. So at that point, my friend was not like that. Um, the person wants to say hi. Of which I had no idea that he was going to do that. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, my voice so, like, literally disappeared. But thankfully, it was a WhatsApp call and then he disconnected. So at that point, I just quickly ended the call. I'm like, oh my God, why did you do that? I didn't expect that and blah, 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 blah. Fast forward yeah. to the next week. I found myself in Ife. I have never been there before. I had never, I, in fact, <coughs> it was basically like Alice in Wonderland because <laughs> I just found myself there. Even though I knew behind, at the back of my mind, that my steps were ordered because I kept on having this push. Even when I had things that were discouraging me and that would make me feel like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. I just had this drive, this push that you have to be there, you need to be there. This is where I was meant to be. And so, I followed the um, leading, God's leading, and I found myself in in, in Ife. And um, we had we had a series of lectures. One of which was given by our darling teacher. Mm. He gave us a lecture on um, youth yeah, evangelism. And <laughs> that day I can't forget because when when I was in the hall and I, I didn't know he was coming to give us a class. Mm -hmm. And he, and then I just I was on the phone mm. and I just saw him like walk past and. In, Everything just post. I just was like, oh my god, this is damn Lola. This is damn Lola on TV and, and everything. And then he now came to class and he was, it was a two hour class, but it seemed like seemed like two minutes because it was. I really enjoyed it. It was so fun. It was interesting. It was impactful. I was really blessed. And <clears throat> after class. I had the option of going to say hi to him, like, mm. hello, hi, my name is this, and, and then I had the option of not doing it, because one thing I didn't want is to look desperate or to look like, I like you, oh my God, I'm, I'm dying to meet you, that kind of thing, so mm. I just told myself that if that was what it was going to look like, I wasn't going to do it. So after class, there are people going to say hi to him, so to, going to meet him, take pictures and everything, and I felt, and at that moment, I sensed that it wasn't good. It wasn't. I wasn't going to look. It look. Um, I'm just going to look somehow. Going to meet him. So I decided to carry my bag, my books. I went to my room. So after one of the Holy Ghost breakfast, I finally decided to say hi to him. And when I did, he was very friendly. He said he he. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, "Hi, hi, nice to meet you," and everything. And, and then he said, "We'll see around." So we continued with our. Yeah. our we're in different groups and mm. different activities going on i was in house of joshua then he was just waiting and, okay no, one, one of the refreshers hey what is yeah. second week now yeah, 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 anyways one of it was now like mm. we're, we're in different groups for um for pro, um, our practical mm -hmm. and and so our pastors just class hello hi and everything until a, until a particular day but before that day want mm. to your own part your own version of this story yes so how we met um funny enough i just fell out of a relationship too and uh i told myself before i enter under that relationship i must be sure god is involved in this one because the last time was um, based on love and yes that was love but love is not enough in a relationship mm. love is not it's not just about love you know you have to find where there is a central point or a a point with imagine point of folk of, of purpose and vision, you know. So I told myself the next relationship is going to be it's going to be God first vision, then maybe love will be the last thing, you know. So that was what I told myself. So I was you know, having this prayer work and I was telling God, please, I want to get it right this time around because that's one area I know that is the most important part of my life. You know, so a friend called me and said there's a lady coming to... It is a lady. 
He said there is someone. someone. Okay, there is someone. No, there is a lady. I was there when he called. There are two friends that could. Oh, two different people. Okay. Uh, let me share my story. Oh, sorry. Uh, he said <laughs> the first level. person <laughs> called me. He said there is a lady coming to Mozambique Institute and she's a doctor. You know, I said, ah, a doctor. And I told myself, doctor, that's the last person I want to get married to. Because I know how busy a doctor can be, you know. And she, she did, funny enough, he told me her name. He told me she's Emanuela, she's from Benin, she's from this. So I have, I have, I have a full detail profile of who she is in before, you know, praying about whether she's the one or not. Then another friend called me and said, there's another place more and these two these two guys don't know each other at all. They don't know each other from anywhere, you know. This person called me and said there's another person called there's someone coming to that's the other person entirely, not the former friend. He said there's someone coming to Mozart Institute and her name is Emanuela. I said, ah, this is the second person telling me about Emanuela coming to Mozart Institute. The same Emanuela. So I started praying about it. I don't know who this person is. I told God I don't know who this Emanuela is, but you know, lecture will be done. You know, so I went to the Mozart Institute. I went to lecture. I'm a lecturer in Mozart Institute. So I went to lecture, and as I stood to lecture the class, and I was looking around, <laughs> then I saw that tall, light lady, and immediately I had a connection. I knew that this is the manner that this is the manner that people are talking about. I just knew this is the person. Then I finished lecturing, a lot of people came to greet me and all that and I you know I exchanged, exchanged pleasantries with different people. Then I was looking for this tough sister that I saw the other time and I didn't see her again. She didn't, she didn't come to greet me, she didn't do anything. Then I went to Ibadan and I was thinking, you know, and I called my friend, I said, the person you are telling about, is it, she tall? I said, yes, is she light? Yes. I said, no problem, that's the person. Then I started praying about her, you know, because you know, I had, I had, I had, I had a, a, a crash, a virtual crash earlier, and I didn't want another you know, drama. Because so I was praying about Ella, and I was praying about her, and I went to the modern. I the next, the upper week, I went there, I went to the modern city again. This time around, I saw her, okay? Then I was with, I was talking to a friend. Then she walked on. The friend, okay, the friend, this friend, I was talking to a friend, this friend said, Dami, I want you to meet this person. Her name is Manuela, she's a Fantastic writer too, and everything. Then Ella was so disappointed, and I was shy about it. And I'm like, oh, that's stop very it, stop embarrassing. Like, he made it stop, that stop, 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 me. stop introducing me. Stop introducing me. I'm like, yeah, you okay, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> stop introducing me. Stop, stop. I don't like it. Stop. Uh, what is wrong with this sister? I said, hey, hello, how are you? My name is Emmanuel. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said oh, he has everything. She was still doing. Oh, I know it's really embarrassing. No, you can imagine. I had, I had already, I had rehearsed my lines. I knew, uh, I knew how I wanted to speak. And there's somebody who came all of a sudden that yeah. hey, there's this sister that's been, that's been dying to meet you. Yeah. It didn't look desperate. I'm curious. I'm So she was with. And I said, okay, I said, I guess I was. So the, 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 it was after, I don't know when it was, I think it was the next day that I went to meet her properly. I said, Manuela, how are you? And everything. She says, fine, what do you do? I still like, don't know anything. I was asking questions. Sure. The doctor, hey, doctor, ah, what do you do? You know? So after, I, I went to tell my dad. I said, look, there is somebody. There is somebody downstairs. Her name is Manuela. And um, she's, she's, my dad said, I know her. I've seen someone like that around. I know her. I know her already. She's a doctor. I said, she's a doctor. Ah, I know her. So I want you to pray. I want you to pray with me because I'm seeing some signals, and I want you to pray with me. And my dad said, "Okay, we'll pray along." And I told the same thing like I like to carry my parents along because I like to carry everybody along, my siblings too, uh, my brother too. I carried my brother along. I like to carry people along in this uh, on this journey because you, really the issue of leadership is not something you can handle alone. You yeah. need spiritual mentors. You need mm. people ahead of you. Who can advise you? Who can pray for you? You know, so I, I involved the family. I were praying together. So my dad just gave me the ginger. He said, "You know what? <laughs> just go and meet her. Whatever she says, <laughs> just believe. If she says no, then just no. That no is no. If she says yes, then pray more." <laughs> Then the next day, I, I went to wear my dress. I went to suit off. Not like I didn't wear a suit, but I, I wear a tie. I looked fine. I looked fresh. <laughs> I, tried, I tried to be as presentable as possible. You know, someone that, it's so funny how the, the, the first serious conversation we had was, was just a straightforward question. But anyway, I, I went to meet her and I told her, 
I would like to see her after the class. And unfortunately, she was busy, so all my dressing and... No, no, everything. no, you have mixed it up. Yeah, I was not when I was busy. You were busy. We had finished our class and then mm. you wanted to see me and went under, under a tree. I sat down. Everything <laughs> was cozy yeah. and cool. It was not under a tree. It was under a tree. Unfortunately, it was under a tree. Okay, so we're, I, we're, I was seated and everything. I, I was trying to crack my brain as to why he wanted to see me. I couldn't fathom. like, okay, why does this guy want to see me? Like, we're not close. The only thing I know is your... Is, who you are on at public and everything I, I didn't know who he was mm. and then i was just waiting to hear what he had to say and then he was telling me no don't worry just be calm just be free i want to just gist with you okay so i'm like okay oh, who does that, that kind of <laughs> just with me. and then at that point suspense was like building and then someone came to meet him that his attention was needed mm. oh it was so frustrating so he had to leave and then yeah, continue. So in the evening, I called out. I went to the class. I sat at the back of the class. I just sat down. You know, I was talking about different things. I was asking different questions. Um, where does she live? Um, her parents. What do they do? Uh, different things. Many. You, you that you ask the short of question, short of. You ask all these two ones after. I'm sure you. Eh. Mm. What did I say before? Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> anyway, so after that, that meeting, what he did was that we had to apologize and, and like postpone that we will meet again in the evening because yeah. I had I had my exams, our like training institute exams. Mm -hmm. So after the exams, he had already changed to something more casual. It was no longer like <laughs> all that. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so um, we had so we went went to, went to a classroom and then we sat down. And so he just told me. So he went. The first question he asked me was. If I was in a relationship. Oh yes, yes, yes. Exactly. I said, are you in a relationship? I was, I was, I was a sharp man. It's in the nail on the mm, head. So. No time for. Nah, so. I said, are you in a relationship, sister? <laughs> I didn't call you sister then. I said, are you, are you, in, are you in a relationship? She said, um, no. Okay, and I said, good. Straight to the point. I said, I would like to enter into a relationship with you, with marriage in view. Then. She was just quiet, just looking at her. This is our action. This is our action. <laughs> That's not what I did. <laughs> you are sweat up and down. I paused. Yeah. And then I stretched and I picked it. There was a file. Then I was <laughs> <laughs> because the question was the question met me on our way. I wasn't expecting to. I was. Because there's no time. I was so shocked, and so I was like, <laughs> "What? Like, what is this? What's going on?" And then at this point, and I told you that. And this is where Shola says water in the ignition, and then I laughed and everything. And yes, then, yes, yes. So I was after he now started asking. Then I was not like that. You don't know me. Like you don't know my last name. You don't know Jack about me. Mm. And then he smiled and started asking me. Okay, that he wants to know me. Mm. Started asking my asking questions about my about me. And then yes. at that point, started talking. Yes. Then the as you can repeat. Okay, then I asked what his conviction was. Like how how would you be so convinced? Like you don't know me. Then yeah. Then okay, that's why I told you about the Isaac and Rebecca. Yeah. Fact. But then I like to hack the way she, she was going to ask that question, so priceless. Because that was the first thing we said. As I met her in the class, I sat down and said, How are you? How's everything? Yeah, that's just the question. Are you in a relationship? Yes. I said <laughs> I no. Up. So I said no. So I said no. <laughs> and I said, I'd like to enter marriage with you. I'd like to enter a relationship with you with marriage in view. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> You're exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was looking for up and down. He was looking for fun up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just didn't see coming. Yeah, so she asked my convictions and I shared it with her. But I think that's what I said. Like. That's the reason for this talk show is just to share to share the to share some things with everyone and basically it's the fact that um my conviction basically for entering the relationship is you know, I told myself that the most important thing is entering a relationship that has the purpose of God as the foundation and as a vision that guides it, especially that has the purpose of God as the foundation and as the vision of God guiding it. You know, um, but it, there's a place in the Bible where Abraham told his servants that go and get a wife for my son, and it should not be from the daughters of the land, but to my father's household, right? Yeah, and that's where you will get the wife for my son. And he, he told his son, I said, swear, swear that you will not get a wife for my son, you know, amongst the daughters of the land. And the mm -hmm. servant, you know, he swore. And the servant went on the journey looking for the wife that will marry Isaac. You know, as he was going, he, saw, he met this well. 
and that's in the land of Isaac's um, Abraham's parents. He, you know, he met this well and he sat by sat by the well with all the cattle and all, and all that. Then Rebecca came. Then Isaac, the servant, what's the servant again? Servant. Okay, the servant. <laughs> the servant called Rebecca. I said, "Can you give me water? You know, can you fetch water for me?" Before then, the servant said something and he prayed a prayer to God. He said, "Father, anybody that will serve me." And also serve my cattle water. I will feed my cattle water. Let her be the one. I know how difficult it is to serve cattle's water. So Rebecca came in, fetched the water. Then the servant asked him, said, Can you serve me water? The Rebecca said something. He said, I will not only serve you water, I will also feed your cattle. And that got me thinking. You know, first of all, those, those cattle don't belong to the servants. They belong to Abraham. So to me, I, saw, I, I, I interpreted it like this, that God has given everyone a vision. The vision or purpose, an assignment on earth, that is like... The, those are like the cattle. They don't belong to you, they belong to God. But it's an assignment that God has given to you. Now, if you don't feed these cattle... And you, if, you don't, if you don't quench their thirst, you will get stranded because they will get tired. In the same way, mm. Your vision should be something you feed. You should feed your vision. You mm. should feed your assignment. You should feed your purpose with the right water, mm. with, with with the right with the right with the right attitude. For example, now if I have a vision to serve the Lord through drama, you now and I don't go to conferences and I don't go to places that will feed this vision, it will die. Or I don't feed this vision with God's word. I don't feed this vision with the, with the assignment that with, with 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 God's word. It will die prematurely, you know. So that's why a lot of people they have visions that have died prematurely because they didn't feed it. They didn't they didn't they didn't quench the thirst of this vision. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't quench the thirst. So in the same way, the servant told God, he said, "Look, I have cattle, and this cattle, I want these cattle to be fed with water." Then came. This beautiful lady, Rebecca, who said, I will not only feed you, I will also feed your cattle. That simply means that the person that God asked for me is not someone that will just feed me, but that will be a part of that vision that God has given me, that assignment that God has given to me. For example, now, the truth of the matter is that the vision which, like, represents, which represents the cattle will definitely carry the servant. You know, it is what the servant will ride on and will move from place to place. It will, it, the vision will, the cattle will make the servant move faster. You know, so in life it's the same thing. Your assignment on earth is what you ride on. I will make you move faster. It will make you keep going. Someone with a man without vision is like a man who is stranded, who is empty. You know, so I know that love is not enough. There should be something that will connect the person that God wants to marry, that God wants me to marry with this vision. That should be a connection. My assignment, my vision has to be connected to the person's assignment and also to the person's vision. Mm. So the person should be able to say, you know what? I'm Let me feed also your cattle. Let me feed your assignment. Let me feed your vision. That vision that God has given to you, mm. that vision that God has given to you for you to ride on, let me feed it. Now I said that the vision represents that's, that's the interpretation that God gave me that the cattle represents the assignment. The cattle represent the vision because it not be, doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God in the first place. I'm just riding on it. You know, so I, I was telling God, Lord, who is this person? Who can feed me? And not just feed me, feed this vision. That means the person must also be interested in the cattle. The person must be interested in the vision, you know. And that was where Maria came in. And I saw this young lady who is passionate about drama. In fact, initially, when the, my friend was talking to me, he was telling me that this sister is very passionate about drama. Now, I wasn't banking on those words. I was banking on one thing. I was banking on you know, the, 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 the move of God, what God is telling me to do at that point in time. You know, because it's, as I, was, I, I saw her, and I saw how passionate she was. And I asked, we got talking, and as we were talking and sharing, we discovered that we were speaking the same language. In terms of purpose, in terms of um, um, you know, uh, passion, passion, vision, we are speaking the same language. We are flowing in the same frequency. She was already even before I talked about. Before I said A, she said B, C, D, E. It's like God has prepared her 
for that assignment that God has given me. He knows that God has prepared that to feed my cattle, to feed, to feed my vision, to feed, to feed um, um, the, the assignment that God has given me. Without even me asking, saying so much, she knows everything. God has already prepared that. That, that. that brings me to the point that whoever God has for you, he has prepared that person already. Rebecca said, I will not only feed you, I will also feed your cattle. I will not only feed you. I will. That means she wasn't compelled to do so. Anybody that you try to compel mm, mm. to fit into your assignment, to fit into your vision, watch that person critically because that person may not be the person that we, you will align with in terms of vision and purpose. Mm. You know, so it's very, it's very critical for you to watch that person, someone that you, you don't have to come because you, you, you sh your person that you will spend with your life is not someone that you will compel. Mm. Uh, please, you have to do this. You have to, you have to follow me to this program. You have to follow me to this conference. You have to share this vision together. You can't compare someone. You can't force someone. You can't force someone to feed your cattle. You can't force someone to feed. It's like saying someone. It's like someone telling Rebecca, you know, you must feed my cattle today. Today, 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 you must feed this cattle. When I begin to feed them, it's not going to come from the earth. And even if it comes from, even it's not going to work. Hmm. You know, Bible says, can two work together? Except Definitely they agreed. agree, there should be an agreement, mm -hmm. you know. So that's so that's the uh, beautiful thing. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Well, for me, coincidentally, that that same scripture had been it became a prayer point for mm -hmm. me because when I read it and I saw what Rebecca did, I had this burden in my heart and I was just praying for because I felt I, there was something that God showed me about feeding of the cattle. She had she had a vessel. Mm -hmm. She came to the well with a vessel, and then yes. it, it occurred to me that what if she mm. came empty-handed? She would have been mm, useless. Exactly. She, so she came prepared. She came mm. with capacity to feed the mm. cattle and of, and to water to also give water to the man. Mm. And then it, I, I just kept praying at that point in my life because at that point I don't think I had even said yes, but I was just praying that God please enlarge my capacity, please help me, give me this capacity. The, expand my vessel and mm. so when, when he gave me his convictions they were just in sync with what God had dropped in my heart mm. and and then before that time too there was a scripture that God had given me about delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart and so mm. I just kept on you know at that point I decided that let me just love love God and serve God I, I had gotten to a point where I allowed God to fill the void in my heart I didn't want to be a lady who without a man I'm not complete without a man mm. I'm Yes. You know, I am I'm, I'm I'm nothing. Mm. My 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 person became that without God I'm nothing. Without God was the one who was the center of my life. I was just out to please God, to love God, to serve God. Mm. And it was that passion that even drew me to institute in the first instance. Yeah. And now speaking of the institute, you want to say something? Yeah, well, still in line with that. Before then, because of my passion for God, before then I had met other guys. So like he was saying about the fact that if you meet a lady and you're like you're dry pushing her, that it's not going to be, it's not going to work. I, I also had met guys who, you know, talk on some le spiritual level, and I found out that this person's depth is, it's not satisfactory. I, I saw red flags, things that made me feel like. Ugh, this person, if I, I if I want to submit to him, it will be a problem because I can't. The authority, the spiritual authority I saw him exercising was not, or I saw them exercising were not very satisfactory. Things like um, I, someone maybe who does not fast or who doesn't see a need to fast. It's not like being religious. We're not talking about religiosity here, but there are just depths. You, you you when you relate to people and they find out that this person, the answers is giving you mm. or the responses you are getting, you're not satisfied. Mm. So at that point, I kept on and 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 I kept on meeting guys like that, and it, it was not like my my standards were so high. But I just told myself that this is God's standard. This is the standard that God has said. I'm not an ordinary person. I cannot just settle for anything. Mm. And so I just kept on loving God and serving God until God brought me mm. the best. You no, know, you were saying something about um, it was you know because of the vessel that someone carries. You, that's what the vessel that Rebecca was carrying was what brought her to the well mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, so also that also talks about location. You know, the well is where they fetch water. Yeah. You know, so that's where the lovely ladies come to fetch water and all that. But Rebecca was present at that point in time. Mm. So it also has to do with your location. Also matters a lot. Mm. You know. God has been dealing with me. God has been talking to me. I was like, look, where you will find your wife, it's, in the, it's by the well. Mm. It's by the well. So stay close to the well. So mm. I'm asking, where? The question now is, where is this well? You know, so 
I got an expo I, I, I realized that the world you know signifies to me um, a place of vision, a place where people came, a place where people come to fetch vision, where people come to fetch um, the revelation for the assignment, for the purpose, for their lives. You know, so I realized, okay, the well is for me. For me, at that time, is the Mozart Institute. Everybody has different wells. Mm -hmm. Your well could be somewhere else. Your well could be another place. But there is always a location. There's always a location where God's will will definitely find you. Where you will find God's will. So, in other words, you will find. God's will in the, the best place to find God's will is in the place of your purpose and is the place of your calling. Mm. That is the best place to find God's will. Is in the place, you know, the, the location of your calling, the location of your purpose mm. is most likely the best place to find God's will. True. You know? True. The well, that well, that side, where, where people come to fetch water is the place you will get someone who you'll be connected to, who will say, you know what, let me fetch water and feed your vision. Mm. And I'm um, sorry, another thing is that, as particularly as ladies, you cannot attract qualities you don't have. Mm. In the sense that if you are not um, prepared spiritually, you're now asking and praying to God for a spiritually sound brother, someone who is going to, you know, Jim Jim brother, and you yourself as a person, as a person, you don't, you're not, you have not allowed God to work upon you, to prepare you. You can't, you can't expect that God who is up there, who is sovereign, will give his own son, who loves him, just any kind of person. So, instead of instead of praying and ask and you know being desperate to meet the person or find the person allow god to work upon you allow god to build you to yeah. break you to develop you to prepare you mm -hmm. for the palace to prepare you for the work he has mm -hmm. for the role he has for you because once he comes it's not at that point now start saying ah god mm -hmm. please uh, i don't know how to pray in tongues or i don't know how to fast i'm not spiritually discerning mm -hmm. it's before he comes so all the time of your waiting all the time of seeking the face of the lord is the time for you to allow god to work upon you to prepare you to get you ready it's not when he comes that you now start doing all that thing because when he comes if he's if he comes and he meets you in an unprepared state mm -hmm. he will be disappointed he, he probably will be like ah, i didn't hear god very well this mm -hmm. cannot be the person mm -hmm. so don't don't instead of praying for our oh god i want this 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 it's good to pray for all those things but also ask god to build you up to develop you to make who make you a better person a better christian yeah all right so um I think we want it to be so after I proposing to Ella, I got talking, you know, I spoke to her the second day, but I was sharing some things with her. I was asking her questions, a lot of questions, and she was replying. So she said she would get back to me. You know, she said she would give me a reply late, much later. I definitely then of course I knew that would be the answer. <laughs> you know, I was I wasn't you expecting I wasn't expecting you would say yes at so oh, okay, okay. Well, you would say I said yeah, if she had said yes, I knew that was a problem. It's been like it's been like Sophia in English. You know, so I knew she was gonna give me you know that post, that's the um, with that um traditional pause of no, 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 let, let, let me pray about it. <laughs> of course let me pray about it. So I knew. So I waited, I said, you know what, give me your father's number. I want to speak to Kaki. <laughs> I, I like to share this thing. But she said I don't that I can't give you my dad's number now. I said give me No but before that I had okay. I had called my dad to tell him this like Dami said it's very important to to be um, accountable to carry your parents along, mm -hmm. particularly if they are Christian and godly parents. And my parents are godly parents who I see as my spiritual head. Mm -hmm. So I told my dad, and he was like, What? Come yeah. start coming home now, now, now. The only girl, the only girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm the only girl. So he was like that. He doesn't want to start what I'm, what I'm saying, though, that how can someone meet me in two weeks and, and ask me out? That she start coming home, so he didn't take it like, like I don't know, excitement and everything. Don't start coming home. So now with this or ground, my darling husband, then not even boyfriend or fiance. Then suit up. <laughs> you got my number, my daddy's number for me. Yeah, yeah, let me talk to daddy because I was daddy. excited. I was, I was you no know, fired up with the. Ah, this is a fire new was thing. I was fire was my bones. <laughs> so let me. Talk, I want to talk to your father. <laughs> you know, so she gave me that number, and I got him and I called dad. Good afternoon, sir. You know, the phone, he said, hello. Good afternoon. And I said, yeah, my name is Damlala Mike Bamley. I have to emphasize that Mike Bamley. Damlala Mike Bamley, we used to go to the same church and this and that. And I'm Emanuela's friend, sir. So I, I guess that already, you know, yeah, knew who knew. I was. So I said, okay, fine. What's the basis of this call? And I froze. <laughs> it's like that question slapped me. I was speechless. And I started saying, uh, the basis, the, the basis, the basis, uh, the, the basis, uh, the basis. Oh. Oh. 
at that point, it, I just said, I, I, I wanted to believe that the network was terrible. Maybe Daddy hung crushes. up on you, Joe. No, I think it's the network. He hung up. I still want to believe it's the network. <laughs> That's why I said this must be the network. In that <laughs> night, you, that night I was still lying on my bed and I was still asking myself the basis of the call, the basis, the basis, the basis of, I was still standing the basis of the call. But you see, today now we have, you know the basis of the call, mm. you know. Mm. <laughs> so it's, been, it's, 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 I mean, it's later on, I know after a while, you know, we got talking and everything. She convinced her parents, you know, and um, the relationship kind of started. No, they, they prayed, they prayed about it. My parents prayed about it. They had yeah. their conviction, but they wanted me to to mm. be sure for myself. They didn't yeah. want me to like give him a reply based on what God has told them. Yes. So I prayed about it, and then God gave me certain things, some mm. words, and mm. <clears throat> I shared with them, and said, okay, if that yeah, they, uh, yeah I, I can go on. I can never forget the first day I went to visit your dad and your mom. You know, it wasn't bad, Joe. It wasn't bad, but you know, the way I was feeling, I was so restless. <laughs> uh, I would daddy feel like I was so so restless. She was just calming me down, damn me, calm down. It's good. No, fine. it's not it's to be the only girl. It's <laughs> so good. You know, but at the end, they end up being the best, you know, people that they are amazing persons. You know, mm-hmm. daddy and my mom are one of the best, and I'm so proud to be their son in law. You know, it's, it's amazing having great parents who are, you know, who understand your assignment, understand your vision, understand your purpose, and they mm. just support you in everything. You mm. know, it's just amazing. I'm gentle right now. Why are you gentle? My mind is at peace. Why is your mind at peace? And I'm so settled. Why are you settled? Because I'm about to meet the last mommy. And that no, my parents, any actually, from anytime from now. Anytime from now. <laughs> I never yes. have to do this video. I'm so not in the mood for this video. Me, yeah, as in, I'm just trying to be calm too. I'm really. I don't want. What, what, should I be the one that is that is hyper right now? No, you should be the one. Like, your role, your character in this um, drama is that okay. you should be the one to to comfort me. I mean, everything is okay. My friends are nice people. Uh, of course, I've told these things before. Now you should know. Oh, my friends are very nice. That's they are here, sir. They are nice. <laughs> <laughs> you can call. You can call the video. Alright, now we can call the video now. <laughs> But I'm hoping I'm living you that it's going to be a wonderful life. experience. Amen. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful experience. Are we done? Yeah, can, the idea is to try to bargain with the father. Like, like you want to take your daughter. <laughs> you <want laughs> to I haven't told you to talk that I'm here on your own. The most important thing is that if we all should understand that if we follow God's path and if we obey God directly completely mm-hmm. and yield to God completely, mm-hmm. it makes all things beautiful this time. Yes. You know, there is no hard and fast rule, as you said. You, it's, it's, God can choose to you know, bring somebody from far away, mm. from whoever the person from far away, mm. and bring the person to you. Mm. And God can also choose to bring someone close to you, close to you, that you've been seeing this person for long, but you know that this person can actually be the person that will end up marrying. Exactly. But the most important thing is that you just be busy in God's service because it's in God's service that you can find mm. who He has for you. It's in God's service that you can locate that person. Yeah. You will not, you won't locate the best outside of His service. The best is in His service, mm. you know. So that is uh, the encouragement I want to give everybody, you know. So, would you want to say something? Yeah, basically, you said it all. Just, mm. I, I believe so much in um, in allowing God to fill the void in your heart, loving mm. God, serving God. Mm. Get, get busy with God. Get yourself focused on mm. God, not on what He can give you, but yeah, just get to the point can, where you tell God, if you, can you can don't give, give me, then I don't want anything yeah. from anyone else. Yeah. If you don't give me. If you don't provide this for me, if you don't give me, then I don't want anything from anyone else. Yes. Don't let anxiety make you make the wrong decisions. Yeah. You know. And there's even another point you get to that, that God, I'm just going to love you and serve you, even if you don't give me this. Mm. Even if it happens mm. that I don't get this whenever, however, I just, mm. just want to love you and serve you. Because mm. God always has the best in store. And, and another thing is that when God closes a door, like mm. both of us were coming out of previous relationships and mm. it felt like, ah, God, can, for me, I felt like, can anyone be better than this? Mm. It felt like after four years of, mm. you know, a relationship and things had gone this way. Mm. It was just disappointment, but I realized that whenever you are in God, working for God, serving mm. God, loving God, He always gives you the best. Yeah, every disappointment is an appointment for a greater he yeah. doesn't close a door to, mm. you know, for, for you if not if he doesn't have something better in store. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever he closes the door, it's because he has something better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you for listening to us. It's thank you been so much. An amazing time. Yes. 
we we do what we are grateful for. we are so grateful yeah <laughs> thank you so much have a lovely time god bless you amen bye Say